you know, one way to catch a faker. Somebody's trying to fake you out, especially some of these little churches out in the middle of nowhere, these country, these countryfied churches that say stuff like, uh, you got to be baptized to be saved or something like that. I forget what the church is called. I used to know what they all believed, all the little individual churches. But anyway, you say something like, you must be born again. And they say, well, you got to get baptized. You say, where did you get that from? And they'll say, John, they'll say John 3. That which is born of the water and the spirit. I said, well, what's the next verse say? That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. <clears throat> the water there is talking about the flesh, the, the earthly birth. The birth in the earthly realm. From the water of the womb. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Well, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? You must be born of water and the Spirit. He's answering the question. You must be born again. First birth is through the water. The second birth is spiritual. He said, Are you such a teach are you such a great teacher? Don't know this. Are you such a great teacher and don't know this? That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. And these little countryfied churches that try to get you to join and snake handlers and the ones that teach you got to be baptized to be saved. They fool people who don't know how to rightly divide the word. And the reason they don't know how to rightly divide the word is because they don't have the Holy Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit. But that one's so simple, you would think somebody with a, an inkling of a mind would understand that It's talking about a natural birth and a spiritual birth. And you can talk to these people until you're blue in the face. And it's a waste of time. You can say, what does the context of the chapter say? If you've ever been married to one like this, you say, well, what is the context of the chapter? What's the context? These people have made up their mind what they want to believe and they're not going to change even if it says it in the Word because they take a verse out of context to justify what they believe. If you take something out of context to justify your wrong beliefs or what you think is right just because you think it is don't mean it is. You're confused. Another verse is uh, in Ephesians where it says submitting yourselves one to another. They'll say, well, that means that the man should submit to the woman. No, read the whole chapter. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. There's two different roles in the marriage. The roles are different. People take verses out of context. He says, submitting yourselves one to another. He tells the woman how to do it, and he tells, how to, tells the man how to do it, tells the children how to do it. People love to take verses out of context because they want, they want it to be what they want it to be. Another one is, uh, <clears throat> they'll say, Hebrews, 
talk, they'll say, well, Hebrews is saying that you can lose your salvation in chapter 6. And you, and you say, well, wait, read all the way to chapter 10. But, uh, but you are not of them that draw back to perdition. So in chapter 6, they say, but it says this. Well, did you read chapter 10? Did you read all the way to chapter 10? Did you take chapter 6 out of context of the whole book? Chapter 10 says you're not of those that draw back to perdition. And another one is they'll say, oh, you're a dispensationalist. The Bible doesn't say, yeah, it does. In Ephesians, in the dispensation. But you can read the whole Bible, the context of the whole Bible, and you see there's an age of grace, age of law, age of innocence, age of government, pre-flood, after-flood, tribulation period, millennium. I mean, you can just you just know there's different ages in the in the whole Bible. So they take stuff out of context, and no wonder people are crazy because they don't they can't rightly divide the the truth. gets kind of old, don't it? Talking to these people. That's why I don't even talk to them anymore. If I see somebody who's taking a verse, especially if the verse is the verse that explains it's right next to it, or a chapter, they take a verse out of context to justify a false doctrine, and I say, well, what's the next verse say? And if they don't want to hear that, then I don't even waste my time with them because they're not really wanting the truth. They're just going by feelings. They're going by feelings and not the truth. And how can you deal with somebody who's living in their own world instead of God's world? They're living in their own world instead of God's world. Let me say that again. How can you deal with somebody who's living in their world but not God's world? And that's about 90% of the people, to be honest with you. So when you're dealing with people who take verses out of context, especially a certain denomination, the Pentecostals do it all the time. When you're dealing with these kind of people, it's best just to walk away because they don't want the truth. <clears throat> they want their feelings to be the truth. What feels good, what they think, instead of what the Word says. All you have to do is read the context. <clears throat> read the context. Read the context. The Bible interprets itself the Bible interprets itself. And if the Bible interprets itself, the world interprets itself. The world system interprets itself. The universe interprets itself. God spoke it all into existence, right? And so, sure enough, the more science researches, it all points back to the Bible, what the Bible says. As science progresses, it points back to the Bible. As the natural realm science does the more, does the deeper research, quantum physics math everything it points back to the Bible being the truth speaking the truth about what this reality is that's 
that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit so he says the wind blows but you can't see it you know it's there because you can hear it but you can't see it and you can see the trees moving but you can't see the wind the air joint airs when you were a little kid they'd say don't do that or I'll beat the tar out of you you know what is the tar the tear the tar is the tear the words that you speak are revealing the truth the whole truth I'll beat the tear out of you what is the tear the flesh mind the old Adam what in tarnation what in tarnation the tears this is why witchcraft gets a hold on people a bunch of flying monkeys with a witch tries to uh, pull you into the tear realm to tear you up to rip you apart if you're in the spirit, if you're walking in the spirit, the tar creatures can't touch you. That's why they try to pull you in to their little their little games. They got to, they always think about, they're always going to try to pull you into drinking or drugging or smoking or something or they want to yoke up with you really fast. pull you into the game the unseen game the unseen realm but it's the dark side it's not the white it's not the uh, light side it, it's a spiritual realm all right but it's the dark side manipulation and witchcraft Rebellion, sorcery, what I'm trying to tell you is the spirit realm is coming out of your mouth and you don't even know it, it's unseen, but just like the wind, you, it's blowing, you know it's there, but you can't see it, out of the mouth the heart speaks, every, everything, every word you speak is spiritual.